Good morning YouTube, Paul with Bates Outdoor Adventures. Today I want to talk about RV living, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So let's get started. I think there's a big difference between living in your RV and RVing. I've done both. Uh, when I was living in uh, Alabama, I had a Class A motorhome that I moved from Alabama to uh, Las Vegas in. And I got to enjoy that one, living in it and RVing in it. I did both with that one. And when I got to St. George here, I uh, moved into a travel trailer, as you know if you've seen some of my previous videos. And I was in that travel trailer for about five years. And then before that, I lived in a, a trawler down in California for about a year, a little less than a year. So let's start out by talking about the good. So one of the good things about uh, uh, being in an RV is the freedom to move about and not leaving a big footprint in the area. If your job requires you to relocate every few years, you know, it may be a really good way for you to do that. Money. They're cheaper than buying a house. A house is, uh, you know, $250,000. You can get into a nice RV, you know, a nice travel trailer, and even new for about $25,000. So there's a big difference there. And so another big thing is saving for retirement. It's the way I did it. I, I got to save a big chunk of money. You know, I almost saved a hundred K in a, a five year period. Um, just by living in my RV, you know, I saved the expenses. My uh, space rent was $250 and I didn't have an RV payment, but eventually I bought the space. And so eventually towards the end of that uh, five years, uh, probably the last two years, I didn't have any bills on it. It was nice. Uh, I got to save, like I said, I got to save a lot of money to do the things that I'm doing now. Um, another thing is uh, purging your belongings. You'll have to uh, purge all of the stuff that's uh, not important to you because you just don't have a lot of space. So. And you, you may say, why is that good? Well, because you're dealing with it now instead of later. You know, you've got to deal with it. So it's whether you want to pay the storage on it or just uh, purging, get rid of it, sell it. Um, the bad, they're small. Um, you don't have a lot of space in them. Um, another thing is uh, most RV parks require that your unit be 10 years or newer. I mean, it's just if you're going to live in the coach. Uh, I found out it's a little bit different if you're actually RVing. You can have an older coach that they really don't question it as much. But if you're living in the coach, they require that your unit be 10 years or newer in most parks. So um, another thing bad about uh, this is you got to have a location. you got to know where you're going and if that area, you know, what kind of RV parks you're getting into and stuff like that. So these are all things you got to think about. Um, you're not going to be able to take everything with you. Uh, you can look at it like this, just like a tiny house, you know. You get a, a 36 inch by 36 inch by 36 inch box, throw everything you need to throw into there and give one to your wife. And then you got one jointly that you'll put all your kitchen stuff in and all your utensils and all that stuff. And that's what you have. I mean, that's it. I mean, that's all you're going to have. The walls are thin. That's another thing. I mean, uh, I hate to say this, but Bev's a screamer. What can I say? Um, and the walls are very, very thin. So your neighbors are um, beside you or close to you. They're going to hear it. I mean, there's just no way around it. Um, one thing that when we're choosing a place to live, the park we lived in, we didn't have neighbors on the left and right of us. They were always gone. They just used it as a, a recreational place. So you got to look at all that stuff uh, when you're choosing the place and, and your location. There's always constant work to do on them. There's, you know, you're always tinkering with them. There's always something to do. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Uh, what's the ugly? So they are hot. They're hot in the summer and they're cold in the winter, especially in the extreme temperatures. Uh, when it gets over 100 degrees, they're extremely hot inside, um, in my opinion. And when it gets below that, uh, let's say 25, the, when it gets below that 25 and you start getting into the teens, they're, they're cold inside. You've got to do stuff to take care of that plumbing. The black water tank needs to be emptied. So when you live in your RV full time, you don't just pull the valves. I mean, you can, but you won't, you won't make it very long. You don't just pull the valves and uh, everything just flows. You've got to take care of that system. And that black water system, I mean, if there's two of you living in it or one of you, it makes a difference. You know, if, if there's two of you living in it every week, you've got to get out there on Sundays and you've got to drain that tank. You, Because you keep your black water shut and uh, and then um, at, at the end of the week, you pull the valve and clean the tank out. And you got to clean it well. And, it you know, it takes an hour of your time. In bad weather, it's rough. Uh, you hear the wind blowing and... Uh, you're going to have some sleepless nights. It's just, there's no way around it. When when that trailer's rocking, uh, you know, you, you, I was out there one night in 85 mile an hour winds, I'll never forget it, and that trailer was just rocking and rocking and rocking, and it's just, it doesn't stop, you know, and if you're going to live in your RV, that's that's what you're going to have to deal with. Um, it's just the ugly truth. Um, 
So would I do it again? Do it again in a heartbeat. I absolutely, 100% would do it again. Uh, just right now in my life, it's uh, things have worked out where I needed. To, I'm helping my with my elderly parents, and I um, I'm enjoying that part of my life right now, and I'm glad that I'm able to help them. But I would definitely move back into a motorhome when the time comes. So, with I just want to do this quick video to talk about. Uh, living in your RV versus RV and then the big difference. I mean, I think the dream is to say, hey, I'm RVing, but I'm actually living in it and going to work. And, and it doesn't work out like that. Um, things happen, you know, like when I have my trailer down in California, when I, the difference between living in it and enjoying it for the weekend, a huge difference, you know. Um, I would go down for the weekends, I would do some work on it, we would plan a trip and all that stuff and we just had a great time with it. When I went to actually move on it, you know, there's things are laid out a little bit differently, the boat gets a lot heavier, and uh, it's a little more bulky to move around. And so it, it made a big difference. Uh, what I do I regret any of it? No. And did I not want to live on it? Uh, absolutely, but I do enjoy the RV in part of it too. So I've personally RV'd across this country probably about four times. I've done it in everything from fifth wheel, motorhome, um, travel trailers. I've done it in a, a, the, the slide-in camper, truck camper, you know, and, and I've enjoyed all of them. Every single trip, uh, probably the funnest trip was in that little slide-in camper one. It was a, you know, full, full enclosed one with all, all, all the stuff. And we drove that thing from West Coast to East Coast all the way down to the end of the... Um, uh, end of tip of Florida and we just had a great time with that thing so it doesn't really matter when you're RVing there's a big difference between living in them and there just is it's just the ugly truth so in my next video I'll talk about six things that uh, the most helpful while you're living in your RV some of them you can even do before you even start moving into the RV so with that being said peace out Paul Bates Outdoor Adventures please share share the message and like and subscribe you know please I'm asking you to and I want to hear your comments below. Also, I'm putting a link in for my Robin Hood. Uh, we both get a free stock if you join. So, again, peace out, my people. Enjoy. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your RV in, uh, UTV in, ATV in. Uh, just have a great weekend and uh, enjoy and be safe out there. And I hope to see you guys soon. Peace.